Hey DIYers, Dylan with Alarm Grid. Uh, today we're going over, do animals set off outdoor motion sensors? A quick answer is yes. There are a couple things that we can do to kind of prevent that though. Main thing you wanna focus on with these motion detectors, unfortunately I don't have an outdoor one, I only have the indoor one. Uh, we'll be doing a little compare and contrast. The main difference is the actual height that you're gonna be installing these at. The indoor ones are recommended about five to six feet off the ground. Uh, the outdoor ones surprisingly are recommended to be about 2.7 to about 4 feet off the ground. Uh, reason being is that they're looking directly out as a uh, wireless indoor motion is looking kind of more at an angle. With the outdoor motion, uh, if you say install it about, about 3.3 feet off the ground, it has a 40 foot radius of where it's looking. Uh, so that way it's not really looking too far down for smaller animals that can pass and set it off. Uh, you do have to worry about larger animals, but if they're tall enough, they could, in theory, walk right over it. Uh, another thing that you want to focus on is the dip switches inside the outdoor motion. As mentioned, we don't have one to show, but there are about four or five dip switches on the outside motion. Uh, depending on how you set those is detecting the sensitivity of the motion. The lower the sensitivity, the less chance that it's going to have a false alarm. It's basically waiting for direct movement right in front of it to set off. The higher sensitivity will set off for pretty much anything. You're going to have a lot of false alarms on that, uh, but it's in a high security mode, so it's just extra aware. For wireless indoor motion detectors, it's the same idea if there's no dip switches on this. There's actually just going into the programming and setting the loops. Loop one, two, three, four. That can adjust the sensitivity of the actual motion detector. For both of those, it's recommended to check either the product page on our website or the actual user manual for the device. That's gonna give you more specifics on how you should set those, how high it's recommended to install them, so on and so forth. Uh, there are also little blockers within the actual motion detector that you can set up. Let me see if I can get this one open. So this right here, this black piece, that is kind of blocking a certain area of this motion detector from being seen. Um, you can kind of add on to that by putting some tape in there, possibly electrical tape, moving this around a bit. Um, and then you'll notice on the outdoor motion sensors, you'll see the dip switches kind of around the same area. Let's see. For the indoor motions, uh, it's also recommended placement. Same thing for outdoor, I suppose. For indoor, you don't really want to put it in an area where it's facing furniture that small animals can jump on, cats, dogs, anything like that. Um, the motion is basically looking for multiple areas to be tripped before it sets off the actual alarm. So if you're having the motion looking at a piece of furniture, either indoor or outdoor, and an animal is jumping from the ground up to that furniture and then possibly back down, it's passing a couple different areas of detection, possibly setting off the motion, causing a false alarm. That's gonna be adjusted by the sensitivity that you set it as, so if you have it on a lower sensitivity, that's less likely to trip it off, but it's still a possibility. You just always wanna keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> another thing that can set off the outdoor motion is sunlight, surprisingly. The sun doesn't actually do it, it's more the heat. So if you have the motion outside and it's either where the sun is rising or setting, and it's gonna get direct sunlight for a good amount of time, kind of heat it up. That could possibly also trigger a false alarm because it's seeing a large heat signature, uh, be it either animal or, or light. Um, and it's mainly, it's bad to say, but it's kind of trial and error with these sometimes. You can place the system on a test mode if you have it with a central station. Uh, your alarm company can do that, or you might also be able to contact central station directly. That way, if any alarms are going off while you're testing this, you're not worrying about false dispatch or anything like that. You just see how the alarm goes, you see how the motions react. Uh, if you're on a self plan where you're only monitoring it yourself, you just have an application alerting you, you don't have to worry too much, you can set off the alarm as much as possible, don't have to worry about dispatch. We do have plenty of more information on the outdoor motions and how to set them up. Uh, we also have a couple of outdoor motions on our website that show a product description, also going over dip switches, height recommendations, so on and so forth. Uh, you can check those out at alarmgrid.com, and we also would love if you gave us a like and subscribe on this video, and if you are interested in seeing when we produce more videos, hit that bell to be notified whenever. Have a good day, and uh, we're looking forward to see you again.